Okay, it's live. I'm gonna jump. How's everybody going? We good? We live? We are live. Live in the event. Hey everybody, we ready to start? Okay everybody, those of you that are watching, we've got lots of people happening here, it's all going, let me grab a phone. We're all good to go. Welcome to this month's webinar with Best Practice. Could somebody grab me a certified magazine, please? Uh, it's all live here at Best Practice. Um, we do this monthly. If you've never joined us before, one of our live webinars and um, uh, the joys of trying to work on the internet and live and use all of the software, it's all coming to you. My name's Kobe Simmet. I'm the CEO here at Best Practice. And there's lots of people scurrying around in the background. I just want to say big thanks to Vanessa, to Luke, to Alexi, to Ellie. Everybody's helping me put this event on for you guys. This is all about you guys. I want the brand new one, please, that one. Yep, that's it, perfect. So, um, quick shout out to the team for the production of issue five of Certified Magazine. If you haven't seen it before, uh, our magazine, it's about to change its name. So um, there's a secret that's about to be a massive relaunch of the magazine. It's been going for about two years now and uh, we'll be dropping the new version of the magazine. Now, why is this important? Inside the back page of the magazine, uh, in here, inside the cover, is all of the uh, webinars that we've got uh, running every month through till February, the 12th of February 2020. So if you want to know what's coming up, if you're really interested in terms of doing these webinars and getting involved in this process, that's where you check it out. You can download this from the Kajabi store, from, sorry, from our online training academy where you guys are right now watching from so if you've had an opportunity to have a bit of a look around go and check out there's a ton of great free content that you can download and an online copy of this is uh, is probably one of the best things that you could be reading this month tons of great information uh, just quickly going through what's there there's there's a great shout out there to our team of business coaches who are coaching people in systemization getting organized having routine processes behaviors um, and those sorts of foundational principles to help your organization and your team to be successful. Uh, doing, we're, we're really good at helping your team do quarterly sprints, 90 day sprints. So in thinking about the next 12 weeks, what does success look like? Uh, and actually coming up with actions and principles and artifacts for you guys there. A lot of the clients that we work with obviously get the pleasant byproduct of an ISO certification, but increasingly about 50% of the people we're working with are not interested in ISO certification. They're interested in the benefits of getting significant quantum shifts in their organization. So that's what Next Practice is all about. Uh, for those of you that have been watching Best Practice for a while, you might have known, noticed a subtle change to one of our logos. This is our group logo now, which is bestpractice.biz. So you can go and check out the bestpractice.biz website. So some of you, that might be the first time you've heard of that, uh, but that's what's happening with a change to us and the pivot that's happening here at Best Practice. We have a certification team that helps with ISO, uh, and we can talk today about internal audits. We have the coaching team, which is Next Practice that you saw here in the magazine. Uh, we have a communications team as well. So lots of stuff happening from a social media perspective. Uh, lots of online free education to help you guys get those quantum shifts. Uh, quick, quick shout out to the team for the book reviews. Uh, we are currently studying This Is Marketing. Uh, we've been through it and read it, but we're working through it as a team. It's a great book in terms of developing and improving your internal communication and your external communication. Uh, if you're a sort of a small to medium sized organization that you work for, I highly recommend the book No Man's Land uh, there by Doug Tatum. Uh, but some great stuff there. The Infinite, Infinite Game by Simon Sinek just released. Uh, Jordison Peterson's um, 12 Rules of Life. All those books are sitting on my desk right now. I'm constantly referring to them. A um, little bit of you know self-help type stuff or what we call here at Best Practice shelf help uh, on win the morning, win the day uh, and the routine. A little bit of stuff, you know, wake up before the sun, those tips and tricks. Uh, really great interview that Alexi did here um, with a Harvard doctorate, Ben Shahar. Um, on chasing the feeling, not the goal, and a principle called the arrival fallacy. So a little bit of uh, academic research there that's worth watching. Um, a little bit more there on terms of reading and doubling your productivity. 
Uh, if you read, th there's some studies out there now, if you read for one hour every day, you'll double your income every year. So that's a really interesting uh, statistic uh, that, uh, that I, can, I can honestly attest to in terms of what's happening. So great work there by the team on issue five. A little bit of stuff there on cybersecurity. So that's a quick look at Certified Magazine. It's been out about a month. Uh, and it's got the dates for the upcoming webinar. So today's webinar, make your internal audits short and effective. One of the most common mistakes we've seen made by businesses across a range of in industries involves internal audits. Whether it's overcomplication, or lack of focus, having the wrong person conduct the audit, or if you're uh, not taking the proper steps in terms of preparing for and executing your internal audits, you may as well not conduct them at all. So you can join me in this webinar, here we are live. Uh, we've been doing these webinars now on a monthly basis for about four years. So if you uh, navigate across to the Best Practice TV YouTube channel, there is a playlist. And if you look at our YouTube channel as a website, it's got tabs and there's a tab there, playlist. You click into the playlist and then drop down into the e-learning workshops. You will see all of the different webinars that we've run. So they're about an hour long. And the great part about them is you can skip to parts that you really like Note the timestamp, and if you want to share some of those videos with people, they don't have to watch the whole hour. You can say fast forward to the 10 minute mark and just watch the three minutes from 10 minutes to 13 minutes if you need to share a message that, uh, that I've communicated. That's the, the great use of uh, those videos there on our YouTube channel. Um, now I want to just draw your attention to a couple of other things before I get into the tips and tricks of uh, internal audits, and I'm gonna to get to that. I've got three really great things for you guys today that I want you to focus on. Uh, check out bestpracticecertification.com.au website and the insights tab. The team here write three informative blog articles every single day, and they are specifically focused on topics to assist you with the challenges that you're having in your teams, and from time to time, different teams, different organizations have different challenges. But from where we sit here at Best Practice, we're working with over a thousand companies on a day-to-day -day basis and we're hearing lots of challenges and we get lots of feedback and we use that feedback to drive articles because sometimes just, you know, two or three hundred words with a little message there for you guys uh, is, is something that can unlock the bottlenecks and give you guys some direction. So we have a really unique position here at Best Practice that we're very, very appreciative of. And, and a very, very respectful of is that we get to see all your organizations and we can see the blind spots, we can see the strengths, we can see the weaknesses. And uh, we use that blog to give you generic information back to hopefully help you with those blind spots. So please pay attention to that. It's a really great resource. It's not a salesy resource. It's specifically focused at helping you with the transformation across. How's everybody going? Everyone's happy out there? There's a technical issue. I think people are getting locked out from the video at the moment. They're getting locked out of the video. Okay, so is anyone in the video? There are some people. There are some people in the video. Okay, so we just got a technical issue it's we're gonna just quickly solve. It's um, asking for Google Apps account. So is it people that are trying to watch through Kajabi that are locked out? So Not sure. Some need to go. So if you're watching the video, can you just let us, can you comment, if you've got the ability to comment how you're watching the video? So we just want to understand who can see it and who can't see it. So if you could give me a shout out and say where you're watching from. So that's always good fun to know where everybody's watching from. So let me know where you are in the world that you're watching from. Comment and let me know, are you watching inside our training academy or are you watching on YouTube? And then the team are going to give me that feedback. That's just going to take a couple of minutes. We've got a two second delay on the stream. Is that on mute? No, it's loud. So Ellie's watching the comments. It kind of seems like he just hasn't logged into a Google no, account. there's two people that are... Yeah, you don't need a Google account. Okay, yeah, it takes. How are you watching it, Ellie? On YouTube. Okay. Caitlin's on YouTube as well. Canberra. This one's from Canberra. Okay, awesome. Hello, Canberra. A little bit of a delay there. It's about a two second delay. Where's everyone watching from? Okay. Awesome. Okay, so if anyone who's having issues with the video, can we get them to watch via that link? Oh, I know. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Okay, so we'll get into it. So today I said I'd talk about internal audits. 
Um, we've got, okay, the best way to watch this is to click the link from the email and go through to, uh, to YouTube, but you guys can all see that. Okay, let's talk about internal audits. Look, I was thinking about this overnight in terms of preparing for this. Uh, the, the concept of internal audits and the topic of internal audits is one of the most popular topics on our YouTube channel. So I appreciate that you guys wanted to hear about that. We had over 150 people register for the event. Um, what I really wanted to talk about today was if we took ISO away, so a lot of what drives us into internal auditing is things like ISO 9001 for quality management systems or ISO 14001 for environmental management systems or ISO 45001 for occupational health and safety management system or ISO 27001 or food safety, HACCP food safety systems, ISO 22000. If we didn't have those ISO standards, we probably wouldn't be talking about internal audits. That's the reality. So because your business or your organization has elected to have those ISO management systems in place, now when I say they've elected, you might have been asked by a customer to have one of those ISO systems in place. And I appreciate that. But if we didn't have that ISO framework or guideline pushing us along, or we weren't going to it for guidance, then we probably wouldn't even know about internal audits. So I want to take a step back and I wanted to, and I was thinking about a medium sized organization that I've been giving some coaching to who are not interested in ISO. They're not, there's no driver in their organization for an ISO 9001 quality management system. Uh, they're an absolutely fantastic organization. I'm not going to name names or talk about the industry because they'll know who I'm talking about. I want to talk about them generically. They're a, they're a, sm they're a small to medium sized enterprise, uh, about 20 people. Um, they are a manufacturer, uh, they've got a distribution network and they've got a retail network. They've got two retail locations, uh, so they've got a, a wholesale distribution network. So they've got a whole, pe whole bunch of people out there that sell their products. They manufacture some products and rebrand them. Um, and then they've got their own, uh, their, obviously their own retail operation. Now, they're not interested in ISO 9001. Uh, as, a, as a quality management system. There's no driver for them to get certified uh, or to have external auditors work on, um, on their system or give them guidance and advice. But they come to us to help, and the, the question they came to us, they said, could you come and help us get a quantum shift in our organization? My answer to the question was yes. Uh, yes, I can absolutely do that. Now, really what we want to look at is we want to say, okay, well, why did, excuse me, uh, let me turn that off onto silent, um, as people texting me from the webinar. Um, so why, why did ISO write internal audits into the standards? Somebody at some point in time, as they were saying, let's build this management system, let's write a specification, and they were brainstorming what should we include in it, um, they were starting to say, okay, well, we've seen success from these different tactics that people implement in organizations. So really, that's the starting point that I want you to consider when you're looking at an ISO standard and we're starting to talk about things like internal audits, I want you to ask the question, why? Just step back for a moment and just do a bit of dreaming and say, well, well why, why would they have included these elements or requirements into an ISO standard if there was nothing? So there was a point in time, way back in history, where no ISO quality management system standard existed. And so you, and it's not that long ago, like, you know, you go back 50, 60, 70 years now, people were starting to think about frameworks for operating organizations, but the international standards say ISO 9001 didn't actually exist. And it didn't really exist at an international level until the nineties. There were, there were different uh, uh, regional standards uh, through the late eighties, and it was certainly being discussed in the early eighties, but even back as far as the late sixties, um, you know, there, it, was the, it, was the, it was the discussion of the academic person who was doing a, a doctorate at a college or a university. It wasn't mainstream commercial operations like it is today. But what was happening was people making observations of organizations. They're saying, well, these organizations that are successful, that are doing very well, that have happy customers, good environmental performance, good cybersecurity, um, good OH&S, what do they do? And they did surveys and they said, okay, well, you know, there's a whole bunch of industry contributors saying, well, we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this. And so that sweeps up all these activities. So the first thing I want to say about internal audits is it has been observed that organizations that can implement effective, short and simple internal auditing processes in their organizations 
That is a characteristic of an organisation that will be successful in place of an organisation that doesn't do it. Now, I can also comment on organisations that don't do it. Back to this story about this, this uh, manufacturing organisation, manufacturing retail organisation that I've been working with, they don't do internal audits. They don't see it as being something necessary. They don't value it. Uh, the, the two people that run the organisation, they know about internal audits, but because there's no ISO driver, they don't do it. And so I started to say to them, I said, well, okay, you want to get a quantum shift in your organisation. What, what do you think? Don't worry about your organisation for the moment. Take a step back. Look at the most successful, productive, um, high-performance organisations on the planet, companies on the planet. Um, have a look at them and ask the question, what is it, brainstorm, what is it that you think that they're doing? What have you seen them do? And, and what came back from that discussion was oh, actually, they review their performance. They stop and you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do a period of time of operation, then they'll stop and they'll debrief and check their performance. Exactly the same as a high performance football team or netball team or soccer team or high performance athlete does. High performance sprinters and athletes will often video their performance and stop and go and watch the video and analyze and critique their technique and then implement some changes and then run again and video it again and stop and look and crit critique their technique until they can get better and better and improve their performance and they'll measure their performance. So videoing an activity, making an observation or videoing an activity, videoing a high performance sprinter at the Olympics running or um, a race car driver or a rock star or, or a band playing by doing the video, that's capturing a moment in time and it's capturing the performance and it gives you the ability to analyze, critique and identify opportunities for improvement. So the first thing I want you to think about is, well, could you video a process in place in your organization, then as a team watch that video to identify opportunities for improvement? Because that's really where a modern internal audit's going to be. In three or four or five years time from now, a modern internal audit is really about that independent view, the camera doesn't lie, and taking a view of what's happening. So when I talk about making short and quick and effective internal audits, I want you to take that approach. You've got a smartphone, we've all got these amazing phones. I just got my brand new iPhone got delivered yesterday. It's got the extra cameras on it and does the 3D and all that crazy stuff. A video with a smartphone is a really great opportunity to give you a, a quick, simple start and, and I think one of the challenges, the most common challenge, I don't think I know, the most common challenge and comments that we get on our YouTube channel and feedback that we get from you guys, I don't know how to start. Okay, well, how to start is what would be a process that we could video with the intention of looking for opportunities for improvement? So taking a video, working as a team, and then looking for opportunities for improvement because it gives us, gives us our discussion point. So if we go back to internal audits, we say, well, at the end of the process, we want to have a report. So the video that we took on our smartphone is the report. Here's the process that I observed. And the second part to the audit is a commentary about, is it what we intended to do or not? And you can discuss that as a team. So if what I did was I had the team prepare for me a couple of um, procedures, and then I've got them right here. So I've, got, I've actually got a policy on this bit of paper, and I've got a procedure here on this bit of paper. So in doing the video, um, we try here at Best Practice not to have too much documentation. We try to keep it short and simple. But we could video or ask questions about this particular process being in place. And what are each of the steps? Could you show me the steps and I'm going to video? Or could you show me the steps and I'm going to take notes? So that's a really good opportunity. So my objective in this webinar is to get you thinking differently. Short tips and tricks. So if you're not ready to do videos yet, tip number two or trick number two would be to take things like flowcharts. If you haven't got flowcharts, that's a whole other webinar. I've got some um, webinars in the YouTube channel on process flows and flowcharts. But if you've got something like this, whether it's a flowchart or whether it's a policy, um, this is a really old technique of mine that I've been using for about 15 years. Is it by photocopying, this is A3 sheet of paper, this is A4. Um, and so what we're basically doing is we are producing it and giving ourselves space to write notes. So working with a colleague, and internal audits have always got a colleague, working together as a team, hey, I'm just going to review your process, I'm looking for opportunities for improvement, how we can improve the organisation, how we can tweak our performance, get better results on our dashboard. I've got a flowchart here of your process. Can you show me what you do? I'm going to follow it. 
and I'm going to look for opportunities for improvement. Now, it could be opportunities for improvement in the process, or it could be that the flowchart's out of date. Now, Kevin's here in the office today. Every Tuesday, it's Tuesday here at the Best Practice Head Office. Kevin comes in, and he he does the internal audits. So he goes and sees team members. He's been with a marketing team member, and, he, and these guys have just been through the process doing audits of what we do so that we can actually keep improving the process flows that we've got. We've got new people starting. We've got Luke's just started with us. We've got Sarah as an intern. We've got two new people starting next week. We're growing here at Best Practice. We use these things to train people, so we want to make sure they're up to date. But we don't want them to be too complicated. Where we need to be a little bit more complicated, we'll have a policy where we've got written text. But this organisation is no different to yours. Even though we've got all this stuff written down, nobody reads it. And if that sounds familiar in your organisation, if you write lots of stuff down, you have policies and procedures, ask yourself a question. Do people actually read it? Do you actually read it? And that's one of the challenges and one of the big frustrations that people keep coming to me about is they're saying, well, I've got all this documentation or I feel I need to produce all this documentation. I'm like, don't, no one reads it. I want you, if you guys have an organisation where everybody reads all your policies and procedures, then let me know because I'd really like to know how you can encourage and motivate people to do that. Because the reality of humans, they're, they're, they're creatures of habit and creatures of repetition. They like to figure out how to do something and then just go and do it. They're not going to keep referring to the instructions and following the steps. We had to follow some steps to set up the webinar for this morning for you guys because we only do it once a month. So we've got some steps so we can just remind ourselves. Uh, if I just turn the camera a little bit, I'll show you our studio setup checklist. Camera setup and audio setup is here on the wall on a big bit of butcher's paper. So that's something that I want you to consider is that it doesn't have to be this lovely desktop you know, published process. We use this amazing sticky butcher's paper from 3M, this product here, um, to do those big checklists. Now if we want to keep that as a document, we'll take a photo of it and we'll save it to our Google Drive. We're a Google office here, we use Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Drive, um, everything here at, office, uh, at Best Practices in the Google system. Um, and so we'll just take a photo and we'll save it to our Google Drive. And so rather than having to have a you know, a fancy document like this, something that's just been handwritten, take a photo, save it into your drive, makes it really quick and simple. And then yes, I can audit against it. I can say, hey Luke, this morning, one time, did you, when you did your camera setup, did you have one tripod and a phone for Instagram, a tripod and a phone and a microphone for YouTube, a Rode Lectone for Kobe for the camera and camera on tripods plus the lights on the right hand side and at the front. And so I can say, have you got you know, head, headphones um, plugged in for cameras and have we got SD cards ready? It looks like a bit of a checklist, but that's all they need because they're doing it on a regular basis. We're in this studio every day uh, recording content. We've got a podcast running right now. So we're recording this webinar as a podcast. Uh, Luke is doing TikTok videos in the background. We've got lots of stuff going on while we're doing this particular webinar. We're making social media content at the same time. So I want you to think about that. How can you have a simple system of working together as a team? So you could consider videos and videoing a process and then sitting and watching the video as a team and making notes. You could have a one-on-one -on -one, you know, one -on -one conversation. So internal audits, tip number three, are always two people. It's never by yourself because that's a self-evaluation. So it's always about working as a team with the opportunity for improvement. Here's stuff going on in the background with the team. Okay, so. Tip number, what am I up to? Tip number five. I want you to really think about how to get started with internal audits. Now one of the, one of the, the I guess we can start to look at inputs. What should we look at in our organisation? If you do any sort of customer feedback, if you've got any sort of incident register, injury register, risk register, um, issues list, Doing internal audits around the processes that, that that issue or incident or injury is related to are really important place to start because that's where you need to make improvements in your organization. Making improvements you know, as a starting point, if you've never done this before, as a starting point, high priority are the places in the organization where you've got problems. Uh, low priority would be you know, your document control system. You know, how, don't go on don't go and do audits and say, you know, I need to check like docu documents are all up to date at the bottom of the document. It's just about asking people, have you got the information that you need to do your job and is the information that you refer to up to date? Don't, please don't go and start raising issues related to how documents are named and coded and dated and all that sort of stuff. That is just an indicator. It's meant to be a technique for people to check have I got the most up to date information. Here at Best Practice, the up to date information to follow and use 
is what's on the intranet, not what's printed out. And so we keep it really, really simple and don't overcomplicate it. So for you guys, I really want to think about how you can get started. Getting started, focus on areas of the business. So if you've got a complaints register, have a look at the complaints register and do some root cause analysis. What part of the business could I go and look at to look for improvements to the process so we don't keep getting that reoccurring complaint, as an example. Uh, second way to do it is to look at critical areas in the organisation. Where do we need to pay attention to constant improvement in the organisation so things don't go wrong? So in thinking about the next 12 weeks, in your organisation what could go wrong, focusing, focusing some attention of internal audits in or peer reviews or peer process reviews. If you don't like the term internal audit, peer process reviews could be the opportunity to quickly talk about it. You say, right, we'll go and do a peer process review in this particular area so that we can actually identify opportunities for improvement before it happens. So in thinking about the next 12 weeks, what does success look like? In thinking about the last 12 weeks, what went wrong? How are we going? Is everyone happy? Got a few questions when you're ready. Okay, awesome. So if you've got questions for me, um, I'm, at, I'm almost at the half an hour mark. So if you've got questions for me, um, hit the comments there. Um, oh, great, we've got some regulars. Hello, everybody who's a regular. Thanks for joining us again. Um, okay, and I'll get into those questions in a second. Um, so uh, again, if you haven't told me where you're watching from, it's always exciting for me because all I'm looking at is a webcam in my office. Um, I know you guys are out there, 150 people uh, subscribed to this particular event and we've got uh, over 50 of you guys online right now. So, um, so yeah, so excellent. Like live with us right now, we've got 50 people watching. So that's a pretty big group if you think about 50 people in a room. So let me know where you're watching from. Um, it also gives you some confidence to use the comments because this is all about, you know, it's my special time with you. I'm live, I'm here. I'm available for about 30 minutes after the webinar finishes. If you wanna send me a direct message on LinkedIn. Um, if you're not following me on LinkedIn, please go over to LinkedIn, search at Kobe Simmet. Uh, you'll find me, hit the follow button and you can send me a message anytime. Um, if you need to, if you wanna connect with me on LinkedIn and you need an email address, I'm getting LinkedIn notifications already while I'm sitting here. Okay, um, so uh, if you wanna message me, excuse me, or connect with me and, it's, and LinkedIn asks you for an email address. The email address to use for me on LinkedIn is kobe at simat.com.au. So that's my spam personal email account um, and I just use that for all that stuff. So it's, um, don't email me there because I won't see it. I get thousands and thousands of spam emails into that account, but that's the email address that's connected to LinkedIn. Okay, um, I'll get to the questions in a second. I just want to finish off one more point I wanted to talk about. So. Have a think about the name of your internal audits. Remember, the point I'm on right now is that it's always two people, so it's never by yourself, and it's always about a peer review or a peer process to work together to identify opportunities for improvement. Now, I just wanna make a comment about that. The more that you can delegate this process of doing internal audits out to the business and not do it yourself, so have everybody have a go at this, the more you will see a significant learning benefit in your organization specifically that people will A, want to know what their process says before they sit down for a peer review or an independent audit, internal audit, and also the people that are doing the auditing learn a lot about other parts of the business. So it's a great way to reduce that friction that might occur between teams because they will deploy a little bit more empathy as to how each other part of the business operates. So that's been a really amazing benefit. So when I run live internal auditor training on site with you guys or Nick does from Next Practice, any of the coaching team are running that tra those training courses on site. That's the biggest benefit that we see on a consistent basis. Now I've been doing this for a long time is that we get people together to work as peers and review with each other and we see a huge learning benefit. And I've talked in previous webinars and videos about the learning pyramid. I'll do a Google search of the learning pyramid. And you'll see when there's interactive involved learning, you get a much, much better learning outcome. Okay, so in terms of keeping things short and effective, the final thing I want to say in terms of getting started is keep your internal audits, the whole process of preparing, interviewing and reporting to be inside one hour. It's the best way to get started. So 20 minutes prepping, what part of the business am I gonna go and look at? 20 minutes chatting to your peers or doing a bit of an observation or videoing and 20 minutes writing notes in terms of opportunities for improvement. If you can keep that really, really simple, it's gonna be the best way forward for you guys. So in terms of getting started, don't overcomplicate it. Don't book yourself in for a whole day. Don't push yourself too hard to get too much done. 
don't set your expectations high in terms of a huge amount of work because it's the small incremental little improvements that you can identify and then influence the business to implement change that's when you're going to get the real ratchet benefits in terms of the organization over time if you can improve one small thing and implement a change one identify one small improvement and implement one small change on a day-to-day -day basis that's 365 changes that you can make in your organization over a year if you just do it on work days and you take out annual leave public holidays um, and all the other crazy stuff uh, sick leave all those things going on you, you're going to make 220 improvements because there's 220 about 220 work days in a year certainly in the environment here in Australia we have about 220 work days in a whole year if you can make identify and make one small change every single day it's going to be 220 improvements to your organization imagine how much better your organization is going to be in the future okay I'll give you a bonus tip if you've got frustrations or concerns if there is something that you can think of that you'd like improved in the organization and you think you can get that thing going quickly use internal audits as your agenda item to basically get that thing moving on. Okay, so uh, let me get into the question. I'm gonna grab this laptop. Okay, um, all right, let me have a quick look. Hello, Jose, welcome back. Hello, Muriel. Hello, Jenny. Okay, who have we, oh, we've got lots here. Hey, Ryan, it's like play school. Hey, Adam, hey, Hugh, hey, Renee, hey, Daniel. Uh, Alexi, good morning. Uh, Alexi is usually here in the studio with us. He's on his way to the Nepal this morning, so Thanks, Alexi. Okay, Adele, um, you sound hurt, but okay. Um, okay, you might want to change your username there, uh, you sound person. Um, okay, uh, Catherine, hey, Mitch, hey, Andrew, hey. Um, awesome, thanks for everybody. Okay, let me have a look. Um, okay. Uh, let me have a look here. Um, people from everywhere. Let me know in the comments where you're watching from. Okay. Um, excellent. Where's the first set of questions? Jose is the first. Um, who's first? Jose. How different is internal audits versus external audits? How different is internal audits versus external audits? Um, Jose, uh, internal audits, like I talked about, the key difference is time internal audits, peer reviews, improvement reviews, opportunities for improvement reviews, keep them to one hour, you know, like 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. Our external reviews that we do here, you know, we've got our certification team here at Best Practice. They might be on an external certification audit that might go for 20 days, and that'll be every six months. I'd like to see you doing internal audits for one hour every week. You know, if you can do one, one hour internal review performance opportunity, you know, identification of opportunities for improvement. If you could do one hour a week, uh, then, then you're gonna get through, you know, 48, 52 a, a, a year. Whereas an external audit is all about, you know, points in time where we're doing a verification that you've got a management system in place, all the elements in place, and then an external certificate. So external certification is to identify that you've got a management system in place and it's being implemented. Internal audits are all about looking for opportunities for improvement. That's, that's the key focus. The standard says, you know, to determine compliance with criteria, look for opportunities for improvement, verify the systems in place. But the biggest difference, the biggest driver is certification is all about, have you got a system? Do you self-evaluate yourself? Can we tell a customer that yes, you have something in place? Because our certificate, you give your, our certificate to your customer. So we're telling the customer, yes, they have a system in place. Internal audits are, you, you're a self-evaluation. It's about looking for, for improvements. That's the biggest difference. Um, Okay, uh, the podcast link's there in the comments. You can jump on and see. Uh, we're now live. Uh, all, a lot of our videos and a lot of the stuff we're doing here in video format, we're pulling the audio out and we're giving you, you guys podcasts. I'm also producing specific podcast episodes. Yesterday's episode, which I think is just about to go live, was all about uh, effective process flow and some tips on developing simple process flow. So that's on the podcast. You can search and find us on Spotify, Google Cast, SoundCloud, iTunes, where else are we? TikTok. TikTok. Um, there's lots of great places. So if you want to see the podcast stuff, oh, that's podcasting. Sorry, uh, Luke there. Uh, Luke's helping me in the studio. Thank you, Luke. Okay. Um, uh, hi, I'm the only internal in auditor in my organization, but I lead two of our internal processes. How am I supposed to audit them? How, uh, Muriel, how many people in your organization, if you could comment? I've sort of already made that comment about getting people 
maybe rebrand it. Don't say we're doing internal audits, but say we're doing internal process reviews to identify opportunities for improvement and have other people contribute. Certainly get someone else to come and ask you questions. Um, it's just about getting a fresh set of eyes. It's not that people carry on about, oh, you know, you can't audit your own work. It's conflict of, in conflict of interest. That's bullshit. It's about when you audit your own work, you can't see the opportunities for improvement. I did an email late last night to our team as a company update, just, you know, it's three things on Tuesday is a, is a company update that I've just started. Um, and I read the email and I proofread it and I reread it and then I sent it and this morning I saw spelling mistakes. Uh, I couldn't see the spelling mistake last night. I checked it, checked it, checked it. It wasn't that the words were spelt wrong, the words were diff similar but different. This is the crazy English language. Um, so you can't see opportunities for improvement because you're doing it every day. So it's, a, it's about getting an independent person. Can you come and check out what I'm doing? Hey, um, hey, uh, hey, Joe, do you mind coming and spending some time with me? I want to show you my process. I want to see if you can see any opportunities for improvement. That's how you word it. You know, it's really simple. Um, hey, I want to show you some of the information. Help me make some decisions about where I could focus my priorities in terms of improving process. I really, I'm really passionate about improving what I'm doing. Do you mind spending some time with me so that we can improve what I'm doing? Hey, um, we're both really passionate about organizing and improving our organization. Let's spend some time together to go over your process so we can identify some opportunities for improvement. Then we can prioritize what we should be working on. Let's see if we can make everybody's job a little bit easier. That's the script I want you guys to be using. Now this is being recorded. If what I just said you liked and you want to make some notes, make some notes now, but you can also come back to this timestamp in the webinar. So we're at about the probably 35, 40 minute mark in the webinar. Just watching the clock, you can come back to this video after the event uh, and go back to that particular point. Um, from the point of view of certification process, is it not necessary to have all the fancy documents? Absolutely not. Luke, could you do me a favor? Can you run out and grab the improvement brochure out of the foyer? And I'll just go through the mandatory documents. So no, um, that's a question from um, Jenny. Um, no, absolutely not. Um, as a certification organization, please do not produce the fancy documents for us. Uh, and, and here is the secret tip. If somebody asks you for something, particularly from a certification organization, you know, like the, our certification team, if they say, where's your fancy documents? I want you to, thanks Luke. I want you to ask the question, show me where it says I need to do that. I want you to focus on doing things that help your organization and they contribute to productivity and efficiency. I don't want you to create bureaucracy. In this particular business improvement brochure that we've, uh, we've built for you, uh, from here at Best Practice, we have a little handout. Um, it's called uh, What We Look For. It's here. Uh, the fancy documents, I'll read them out to you. The fancy documents we look for from a certification perspective, we want to see the company's why has been defined. So here at Best Practice, it's about inspiring improvement in 100 million companies and having organizations that are profitable, efficient, fun, safe, and happy places that are managing their risks adequately and they become great places to work at, invest in, and buy from. That's our why here at Best Practice. Uh, it's, on, it's on a whole bunch of our stuff, it's on our website, uh, some of our material, and it's certainly verbally communicated at almost the start of every single meeting we have and video we shoot. Uh, the, other fan, the next fancy thing we want is quarterly strategic planning and management review workshops. That's the fancy thing we want to see. We want to see that you're reviewing your business quarterly and you are doing a business management review every quarter. Uh, not a document, it's a thing we want to see that you do. We want to see a SWOT analysis or a risk register. We want to see actions being taken. Uh, we want to see a business plan. We want to see uh, potentially a one-page business plan. We want to see a dashboard of business statistics that you can track your performance and get a clear picture of what you're doing. We want to see a map of your main business processes, not, not simple processes like or, or detailed processes like what I showed you, just a, here's our people and culture, here's our sales, here's our marketing, here's our finance, here's our operations. Uh, we want to see uh, stakeholder analysis. We want to see an organizational chart and position descriptions. We want to see training records. We want to see peer process reviews or internal audits like what we're talking about today happening. We want to see how you track and review your compliance obligations and we want to see operational controls. Nowhere there does it say we want to see thousands of documents. We want to see evidence that you are running your organization. We want to see evidence that you are self-evaluating your performance and we want to see evidence that you're identifying your opportunities for improvement. So Jenny, I hope that answers your question. Um, yes, uh, Claudia. 
I'm in the same position. Can I train someone to the audit process? Yes. Uh, so I just I've answered that question. Um, uh, okay. Mirror, mirror replied as well. Uh, okay. Awesome. I'll get to that one in a second. Uh, someone from Morocco. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for joining us from Morocco, Dell. Um, for an Jim. Um, for an organization of 150, how many internal auditors do you recommend? 150. I would like everybody to be contributing to peer process reviews and working together to get some buy-in and improving the organization. I don't think you need to put everybody through you know, a massive internal auditor course, but just giving people enough information to be able to sit together and identify opportunities for improvement and to be able to make notes and make suggestions. And so, um, 150 people I think should be trained to be peer process reviewers, to be able to buddy up, uh, you know, be buddies and work together to improve the organization. More formally, in an organization of about 150, maybe, you know, maybe 10 people, um, you know, because that, that sort of, you know, it's one to 15 as a bit of a ratio. Um, maybe, you know, one to 10 is a good ratio, somewhere between 10 and 15, that do the formal internal auditor training, like the course that we've got available online, uh, you can go and do my internal auditor training course. I've got a discount for you guys today. For those of you that haven't done my internal auditor course yet, um, we've got a live internal, we've got an uh, online in, internal auditor course that I'm going to talk to you about in a second, and we've got a discount code. So that's a great course. It's more of this great content where I take you in depth through all of the elements of undertaking an internal auditor. So, Jim, you might choose to put, say, 15 people through that internal auditors course, and they'll get a certificate. Um, how do we recruit internal auditors? Um, it's really people that are passionate about improving the culture in the organization, improving the performance of the organization, who are really driven to help. They love the organization, they want it to succeed. So Jim, and that's how I would recruit internal auditors. I hope that hurts. Uh, I hope that helps. Um, uh, yes, uh, the difference between stage one and stage two, comment there. Um, Yes, Jose, uh, an internal audit can help with gap analysis observations. We've got those free checklists uh, that, that we've got, you know, quality, safety, environment, or ISO 9001, 14001, 45001, 27001, the free checklists available. That's getting a little bit complicated. I want you to keep these things short and effective. I don't want you to get sort of paralyzed by a huge amount of content. Um, so, yes. Um, uh, Jenny, how can you get the brochure? Uh, do me a favor and message Hugh. Hugh is here listening in and Hugh can email you a copy of that particular brochure. Um, so my senior leaders feel like an audit should catch things and when they don't, uh, they get upset and blame the auditors. How can I communicate that it's not the purpose of the audit? Elizabeth, get them to watch my videos. Um, I'm a CEO at this organization and internal audits are about identifying opportunities for improvement. It's the self-evaluation process for your organization. Um, if you're on a diet and you're trying to lose weight, it's internal audits are the scales. This is how much you weigh and you can measure where you, where you want to be. It's about, it's about it being a self-evaluation process. Maybe you could rebrand your internal audits and call them business coaches. So, uh, you know, it, it, it is, we are at a really unique time in organizational, organizational cultural development globally, where we are moving away from being police, catching people, punishing people. Now, and I appreciate there are still some international cultures that are like that, but to get success out of people, it's about help and nurturing. It's about super one-on-one, -on -one, super high touch, super deployment of em empathy in the organizations and the organizations that blow up, that really blow up and succeed like Facebook, you know, these are Apple, these organizations that really, really explode and go really, really well, have super high touch, super one-on-one, -on -one, super empathy and super performance improvement op operations in their organizations. The organizations with leaders that are, you know, this is how it will be, it's police state, it's dict dictatorial, uh, it's fear driven, uh, those organizations won't succeed in the future and and it's important for those leaders who are having that expectation to really start to have a paradigm shift in their thinking and start to really change what they're doing um, and how they're leading and if they won't change they'll fail so it's really something that I want you guys to be uh, to be thinking about uh, in terms of that um, internal auditors, auditors must be uh, certified uh, that's a question from Claudia uh, no, that's not the case. Internal auditors don't need to be certified. I recommend they have a little bit of training 
Um, if, and again, from a certification perspective, you know, internal auditors need to have some training so they know what they're doing. Like everybody needs to have some training so they know what they're doing. Like if you have a look at my LinkedIn account, I put a post up this morning of a photo of our 8.30 team training. We do tra team training every morning at 8.30 for half an hour. Um, we have another weekly training session for half an hour on a, on a Thursday night. It's just a phone call because we've got people all over the world. Um, so um, yeah, they don't necessarily need to be certified unless there's an external requirement from a customer or somewhere else to, uh, to have certified internal auditors. Uh, Alex, creating a quality management framework, how would I display or record internal audits in the framework? Could I include this as a continuous improvement register spreadsheet? Alex, absolutely, that's a great idea and I would support that. Um, don't be scared to take record things as photos or videos and just save them into a Google Drive, keep it really simple, uh, but, but that's a great way to do it uh, on a register or a spreadsheet. Uh, Elizabeth, everyone gets paranoid about major versus minor findings. Is that still relevant? It's not. Major versus minor findings, like everyone gets paranoid about it. So if we're doing something in an organization that makes people paranoid, it's driving fear. Fear is not way, a great way to motivate people. We want people to be excited about identifying opportunities for improvement because they want to improve their performance. So I would almost discount major and minor findings. I, I don't participate in the discussions. Um, we used to have people here at Best Practice, you know, I've got to smash them with a major non-conformance. I'm like, that's not going to help them grow. People want to be somewhere where it's safe and it's a loving environment in the workplace and they're enjoying what they're doing and they're motivated to exceed and excel and they love the mission and the vision. So, you know, if, if something was identified, it would be more appropriate to say, this is not congruent or consistent with the business plan or the mission and vision of this organization. We need to improve this area. And it's a high or a low risk. So, you know, there is still an industry issue where people are talking about major and minor findings. I don't subscribe to it. I don't agree with it. It still exists though. I think we should be moving to this as a high, medium or a low risk finding and risk rating your findings because it's about, you know, it's not a major non-conformance. This is an issue and it's a problem and it's a broken part of our business that's going to upset a customer. That's a high risk issue because if we upset too many customers, we'll lose customers. So, you know, maybe thinking along a risk, you know, high, medium, low risk, if you like. And, and you can interpret this. Don't follow the industry because the industry is not necessarily right. That's why I work so hard with you guys on this YouTube channel, on the podcast, on the social media, because I want to change how we're viewing this stuff globally. We need to get back to first principles. Too many people have been uncalibrated and thinking they're going in the right direction and, and dictatorial leadership um, and fear-based leadership but it's, it's, it's now proven to be ineffective. It's got to be encouragement and support and motivation and charisma and guidance that, that are going to help organizations to improve. Um, okay, this is awesome. Keep the questions coming. I'm listening and I'm reading them. Um, everyone gets paranoid about, all right, I've read that one, sorry. QA framework would include everything that the BA auditor would look at to become certified. Potentially, uh, Alex. Um, um, that stuff that I put in this, that, that's in this is really what we look at to certify people uh, but from an internal auditor certification perspective I'm not sure I totally understand the question you could do what's in our course online and that will give you a certificate um, so uh, there's a blue if you're watching in Kajabi I'm not sure or where you're registered uh, you can hit the blue button and there's a discount code to give you a 35% discount today on the internal audit course or anything that you want to buy out of our online training academy today's the day to do it um, workshop 35, I'll leave that discount code uh, for you for 24 hours. So you want to make that decision really quickly. Um, workshop 35, so workshop, one word, 35 on the end. Uh, that's what the coupon code looks like, workshop 35. Um, and that's going to get you a 35% discount off any of the courses. There's a great internal auditors course there in the training academy that I highly recommend. If you haven't done it, uh, please jump on and do that. Um, okay, um, there's no shell statement from ISO that internal auditors are be certified. That's exactly right. Um, Ryan, uh, what do you find works well with implementing and reporting realized opportunities in relation to business benefit? The quarterly business reviews are really important and one of the things that's starting to come out in, in like leadership and management development circles is celebrating success. It's really important to celebrate success. 
in thinking about the last 12 weeks, what went wrong, let's celebrate that. And so in terms of those quarterly strategic business reviews that I talk about, the standards all talk about management review. Management review has to be quarterly. Successful organizations, the big successful organizations review their businesses and reset their strategic plans quarterly. It's important that your management systems don't sit in isolation to your business operating. And that's you know part of this strategy that I'm driving really hard with here at Best Practice is to ensure that management review and quarterly business review is the same thing and you want those things tightly integrated. Now, if you need to get your message in terms of what you're trying to achieve into the CEO, then reach out to me and see if I can, if I can help you with that because that's really where those two things connect. So um, that's how we do it. So celebrate your successes. So let me just check that question. Um, Okay, um, so what do I find works well with implementing and reporting realized opportunities in relation to business benefit? Um, that, that's the best way. And then measuring it, so looking at your dashboard and saying, we had this improvement, we implemented this task, and that graph had an improvement. So everything here at Best Practice is all about graphs um, and the dashboard. Um, excellent, Ryan, I appreciate that. High, medium, low risk idea, that is fantastic. Please use that. Um, Okay, at you sound clause 7.2 competence, you are correct. Uh, people uh, getting training and development on what they need to do. Um, some may not like major and minor, but your CB will be, will be using that language. Tell your CB to fuck off. Part of my language, but nowhere does it say, say that you need to have major and minor findings. Um, I'm driving this, you know, the certification team we have here at Best Practice, I'm driving it to be the number one in the world. Like we already have the most so social media presence and I won't be advocating for major and minor because it drives fear into people. It doesn't work anymore, it's ineffective, and you guys need to be part of the groundswell to stop it happening. So tell your CB you don't like it because they're your supplier and you're the customer. Um, let's change it, it takes you, you're the customers, you guys are out there in the marketplace. If that's the transformation you want because you've, you've listened to me and you agree with me and you know that that's the right thing to do, the right thing to do is the right thing to do. So push back, tell your CB you want high, medium, low risk. Like put them on the bat foot. Stop, you know, stop letting them be the, the power struggle and the power shift out there. Um, and if they question you, say, Kobe said so. <laughs> um, tell them to fuck off, like fair dinkum. Um, okay, um, okay, this, so there's a comment there, the webinar code, you can click that link. Uh, the webinar code, code's been dropped there in the comments. Um, uh, with, as you say, an order to day performance, you're looking for more short steps to achieve larger improvement. How do you report and track all the audits? Just a spreadsheet uh, is really simple, Jim. Um, if you wanna do that, here at Best Practice, we just track them with photos. So we just take photos of everything we're doing and we've just got a file and you can see the preview of all of those photos. That's how we track it. It's just all the artifacts sit in a Google Drive. I try not to make extra bureaucracy here at Best Practice by creating spreadsheets and spreadsheets and spreadsheets. We just go into the Google Drive, you can see the date of all of the files. Um, iPhones are really great, the iPhones sync with the Google Drive. It's really, just just use your smartphone. Be really simple, keep your technology, use your, your technology now. It's not 1990 anymore, it's 2019. We all have smartphones in our pockets, they all have cameras, they can all link to our Google Drives or our Dropbox Drives. I want you guys to be using that smart technology to take bureaucratic steps out of having these management systems operating. Keep it really simple. Um, why do external auditors ask for evidence that internal auditors have been trained? There used to be, um, so this is for Renee, there used to be an old thing in the standard that said oh, internal auditors shall be trained. It's now gone, um, but there is, that, there is that part of the standard about training your resources. So our training here at Best Practice is less formal. We do regular training every single day for 30 minutes and we cover lots of different topics. Do we write it down? No, we don't. Uh, we don't keep evidence of that training because we're focusing on high performance outcomes. I'm not just gonna keep evidence of that training because an auditor walks in here and says, oh, do you keep records of your training? I say, no, I don't keep records of my training. Show me where it says I need to do that. Like it, it, there's no requirement to keep records of that daily training that we do. We just do the training and we track people's performance and we, it's, it's about daily coaching. Let's call it coaching. We coach people for 30 minutes every morning. Um, so, you know, I want you guys to do less. Stop worrying about all the evidence. I want you to worry about improving your performance. Focus on your customer. You know, the, the jargon of today is about CX, customer experience. Focus on improving your customer's experience, your staff's experience, your environmental performance, your cybersecurity. 
and then deal with the records and documentation later on. But if you can, if you can just focus on improving those experiences and improving your organization's performance, you're gonna do far better and you're also gonna be able to push back and say, hey, check my performance. My performance is better than your performance. You need to do it the way that I do it. That's how standards evolve. So we wanna drive in improvement, not worry too much about compliance, if you, if you like. Like, yes, deal with your regulators, deal with your supplier, you know, your customer contracts. You have to do that because that's what your customer is asking for. But in terms of internal process improvement, what the true essence of internal audits is all about, it's about identifying opportunities for improvement and constantly maintaining the organization. Um, keep the questions coming. I'll give you guys five more minutes. Um, uh, what, uh, okay, you're changing my past 35 years in quality with your refreshing approach. So how do you track all the audits and keep it simple? Like I just talked about, Jim, we just do it really, really simple. Like take photos. We use lots of photos here at Best Practice. We airdrop between all the Apple computers. It's 2019, it's gonna be 2020 next year. I want you to think about what this looks like in, like look at the technology we're using right now. Like you guys are commenting on YouTube, I'm going through a webcam through an Apple Mac computer that's a laptop on a table. Um, you know, even the big cameras we had here in the studio, all the equipment, that's becoming less and less every day. You know, we're recording a podcast, we've got a webcam going, Luke's doing TikTok, the girls are out doing the social media stuff. Like, look at what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe your organization in 24 or 36 months time is just gonna be basically a social media feed on the, maybe on Slack. Are you using Slack or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger? You know, a lot of the training here, internal training here at Best Practice happens via Facebook in a private secret group. If you wanna show evidence of the training or evidence of internal audits, just record videos. Here's our, all of the videos of the internal audits. Turn on a webcam, sit and have a conversation, press record, you can go back and look at it. That's a great way to record minutes of a meeting. Like this is a meeting, you, I've got 50 people watching, we're having a meeting together, and, and basically this is the, you know, it's being recorded. What did I say? Go back and watch it. So recording meeting minutes with video and smartphones, uh, we've got these really great tripods here at Best Practice that hold a smartphone. Let me grab one for you. So here's one here. Um, let me just, two seconds, I'll show you this. So we have these really funky holders here at Best Practice. So there's these little flexi sticks, it's called a Joby, J-O-B-Y, and you put the smartphone on it and you can record the video. So we just go, I'll just do it for you quickly, hit the camera, turn on the video, turn it around to face yourself, press the record button, there you are. You can see what's going on in the background, there's all Best Practice in the background. That's a really great way to record your meetings and record your videos, really simple. You don't need anything more than that. You don't need thousand dollars worth of technology. So that's how you can record your internal audits. So um, Jim, I'm sorry that I'm changing your 35 years of approach, but I'm sick and tired of bureaucracy and making things complicated. And I've been looking a lot lately at why organizations fail and why they succeed. And the organizations that can work smart and really simple and keep it really efficient are more likely to succeed. It's really interesting. 60% of businesses that start fail in the first three years, 60%. Half of 1% of businesses that start deliver the financial promise that they make at the ten, made at the 10 year mark. And so there's 39.5% of businesses that live a daily struggle. So if working in your organization feels like chaos, if working in your organization feels like you're never getting ahead, if working in your organization is frustrating and people aren't on the same page, that's what this is all about. It's about improving performance. And that's what I'm passionate about. You can feel the passion coming through in my voice, Jim. So, um, you know, I appreciate, it is a refreshing approach because I'm sick and tired of people, you know, external auditors that really aren't qualified to do what they do. They've sort of stretched their career, but they haven't come out specifically focused. I think every single certification auditor or external auditor should have an MBA. They should have been a CEO. They should have run an organization not a technical engineer that trained themselves to do quality management systems. You know, they got no idea about customer service or net promoter score. So um, actually one point on that, I'll do it in a different webinar for you guys, but I want you to measure your customer satisfaction with NPS, net promoter score. So your ultimate measure of the success of your quality management system is net promoter score. How likely is your customer to recommend your organization product or service to their friends and family on a scale of zero to 10? It's really simple. It's the modern version of customer satisfaction survey. 
and, and everything that you do in your internal audits, everything that you do in process improvement, everything that you do should be focused on improving your customer's experience because that's where the money comes from. Okay, um, I'm at the one hour mark. You know, you guys know I can talk all day. Uh, let me just have a quick look at this. I got it, keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. That's exactly right, Jim. Um, Kylie Baker, keeping evidence is hard habit to get into. Most of the time we just do. You're exactly right. Kylie, that's why we just take lots of photos and stuff here at Best Practice or, or record on video. Um, Jenny, there's an app called iAuditor which helps tracking with records. That's correct. Um, iAuditor is a, a, a good software system. There is a fundamental issue with iAuditor. The issue with iAuditor is that they can't actually um, put all of the data into a database. Um, it's all separate individual records, but I believe that they're working on fixing that. So it is a good way to do it, but again, I think it's really easy to just go and have a conversation in the organization, take videos, take photos, and save them to a Google Drive. You don't need extra apps. Don't get yourself all caught up in having to learn an extra skill. Use the technology that you've got in front of you to work for you. Keep it really simple, okay? Uh, Daniel, um, do you have any advice uh, to having a good split between do you have it, yes, no questions, and more open quality of questions? Uh, I do. Uh, most of that advice for you, Daniel, is in our internal auditor course. I do a whole section on questioning, open, closed, challenging, subjective, all that sort of stuff. And in the internal auditor course, there's a 200 page manual that goes with it. It might, might be 240 pages, I think, but it's big, which is a handbook and a manual that goes with everything that I'm talking about. So um, yes, my advice quickly is, hey, I want to work with you on your process. Can you show me how you follow your process? Um, you know, that's an open question. Then you say, hey, do you keep any records of that? How do you, how do you sort of, you know, how do you keep a track of what you're doing? And they might say, I enter it in a database. You know, so, so open, closed questioning and subjective questioning, I cover that all in the internal auditors course. Okay, so what funds this process? If you guys haven't done the internal auditors course, uh, if you are a best practice client already, you get the course free with your certification. If you're not a best practice uh, client of the certification team, uh, you can jump on and purchase that internal order of course. It's online, the link's there in the comments and use the discount code today for a 35% discount, uh, workshop 35. Um, happy to keep providing you guys with all this free content. You support us, you scratch our back, we'll scratch yours in terms of producing this stuff. Um, if I said something in this particular video or if I've said something in any of the other videos, that somebody else in your organization needs to hear. They should have been watching this. I wish such and such heard this. I want you to share this video or share any of our videos. Like copy the link from YouTube, share it with them and email it to them so that they can hear everything that we've got to say. Jim, the refreshing approach that you talk about there in your comment, that's exactly what I'm trying to do and I need your support. I have a favor to ask. Uh, we're doing a ton of work on social uh, media. We're doing a ton of work on best practice. Uh, we're changing our branding in terms of our business improvement agency here at Best Practice to bestpractice.biz. I'd appreciate if you guys could give us a like on any of the posts that you see. Just hit that like button. Then I know that you're watching and I know that you're seeing it. And also if you could hit the share button, that would really, really help our cause. Uh, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. So smash the like button if you really like this. Uh, thanks for all of the amazing comments. I really appreciate that. Um, Alex, I'll get to your question in a second. I see it's just come through. Um, I'll do one more question. Uh, so hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, but more importantly, jump across onto LinkedIn and follow my profile on LinkedIn. I'm active on LinkedIn all day, every day. So from when I wake up in the morning at five o'clock to when I go to sleep about 10 o'clock at night, I'm active on LinkedIn. That's the best place to answer. You know, if you have a private question you want to ask me, something that you need some help with, send me a message, direct message on LinkedIn. It's the place to get me or, or make a comment on one of our posts. But if you hit at Kobe Simat on LinkedIn, um, as a professional development exercise, you guys should be on LinkedIn every day and checking it at least once a day, every day. When you see a post from Best Practice, jump on and follow the Best Practice um, company page uh, on LinkedIn. We'll post the link to that in the comments here. If, if Ellie or Vanessa, if you could um, drop the Best Practice link and my link, uh, the LinkedIn links there in the comments, that would really, really help. Okay, uh, let me grab Alex's question. That'll be the last one. I've never done an internal audit before. Where do I start? We have an issue with people doing their own invoicing, potentially look at reviewing that process. Absolutely, Alex. Um, so here's the verb. Here's what I want you to say, Alex. Um, hey team, um, we've got lots of people doing their own invoicing. Uh, it's a process that sometimes gets a couple of issues. Sometimes we get customer complaints. We do a little bit of rework. 
I want to get together as a team. I want to work together and we want to do a peer process review of our invoicing system to look for opportunities for improvement. We're going to write down suggestions for improvement. We're going to pick the best three suggestions and we're going to work as a team to implement those. So we're going to spend about an hour looking at this process. I'm going to do a bit of a bit of a research to begin with. We're going to work together as a team for 20 minutes and then I'm going to write up some notes and I'm going to choose the best three opportunities for improvement and we're going to improve this invoicing process. Who's with me? That's your script. Uh, YouTube did us a favor and just recorded it for you, Alex, so you can go back and you can have a look at that uh, particular timestamp. So we're at, we're at the one hour mark, it's right at the end of the webinar. So when you get the recording, fast forward. Okay, the team are dropping the links there to the best practice page on LinkedIn. Um, and they're also dropping um, the link to my profile. I think they're about to drop that too in the comments. Um, Jose, I'll give you one more bonus one. Jose, um, with photos, etc., there must be an internal privacy awareness when doing so. Look, um, Jose, yes, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. Everybody knows here at Best Practice, it's our culture. When it's your culture and you get that cultural change and cultural shift, everybody just accepts it. So, um, you know, if people are sensitive to, you know, oh, I don't want my photo and I don't want, you know, that sort of stuff, the team's going to change over time. Those people will move away and people will start to accept how we do things. Um, okay, the comments on my phone are going off, so I appreciate everyone sending me messages. Um, thank you, everybody. I just want a massive shout out to Luke. He's right here behind the, the dashboard. Hey, hey, I'll show you. Here you guys, you guys go. I'll show you behind the scenes. Here's everybody. There's Luke with the dashboard. There's Caitlin in the background. Vanessa, Ellie, there's everybody. Guys over there right here at the Best Practice team. So that's everybody behind the camera, a bit of behind the scenes for you. Uh, thanks to everybody with, for your help this morning. Uh, we got the thing working. Um, so smash the like button, hit the like on this video. Um, any of the comments, turn on your notifications, subscribe to the channel, but more importantly, hit those links on, on LinkedIn. Um, and if you haven't checked out the podcast, if you're a podcast listener, uh, go and search for me on Spotify, Google Cast, um, all those places and uh, any place where your podcast is. Now, if you can't find our podcast, it's the Kobe Simmet Audio Experience. If you can't find any of our podcasts on your favorite podcast platform, message me on LinkedIn and I'll make sure that we get our podcast loaded up where you want to listen to it. Okay, that's a wrap. Thank you everybody for your time. The next webinar is on the 11th of December. Oh, look at that, how to write a process flow. My most favorite topic. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for everybody. Thanks for all of your help. And I will see you soon right here on Best Practice TV. Bye for now. Don't forget to check out bestpractice.biz. See you soon.